Hey familia, Miranda here and in today's video we are going to be taking a look at my entire basketball movie collection. So just like my boxing uh, movie collection that I shared a while back, if you weren't able to check that video out, it will be linked in the description box below for you to uh, head on over and give a watch. Um, but basketball, you guys, is another one of those sports that I hold very near and dear to my heart. Um, it is a sport that played just kind of a huge part in my childhood and I will get into that as to kind of why. Um, before we actually uh, see all the films that I have in the collection. So basketball, you guys, I grew up watching basketball. Uh, my childhood, like I seriously remember just me, my dad and my stepbrother, we kind of just bonded over watching basketball games. We had one TV in the house. It was this tiny little like 12, 13 inch TV. So we kicked back in the living room and just spend hours um, watching all the games and stuff. But me and my dad personally, we were diehard Blazers fans. And then I don't know if my stepbrother just did it to kind of go against us, make things more fun, but he was a hardcore Lakers fan, which to this day, he is still a hardcore Lakers fan, you guys. Um, but it was always fun. We always had a good time watching the games and stuff. And it was just something, you know, the, those moments that you just kind of cherish. I mean, you're just watching the game and stuff, but um, we just had so much fun, you know, watching them and just kind of bullshit and all that when it came to the games and stuff. And then even, you know, also, I mean, we live pretty humbly, you guys, but somehow my dad always managed to be able to take us to the games. So it was pretty dang awesome being able to go watch the Blazers live at the Rose Garden. We would just take the Max, which is kind of like our, you know, Portland's subway minus the whole kind of like underground scene type thing. Um, but we would ride it all the way down to the Rose Garden and go watch the Blazers play. And it was an experience. We definitely tried to go to most of like the Blazers Lakers games um, just because it was loads of fun you guys and just the, the whole fans and everything it was just always such an awesome awesome experience to go see them you know in the Rose Garden and stuff and so yeah uh, it was always just quite the experience I remember this one time though we were about ready to leave for the game we opened up the door and there's an entire SWAT team outside we had no idea what the heck was going on and turns out that the person living next door to us, our neighbors, um, like they had a bunch of people living there. So people coming and going like all the time. But I guess there was some sort of a bomb threat and we didn't even know about it, you guys. And we're like, yo, we are trying to get to this game. And so it was just kind of crazy because the SWAT team literally shielded us. They kind of took us around like, get down, get down. And you know, to lead us out of the parking lot so that we could go to our game. It was wild, you guys. That was definitely uh, an experience <laughs> just to get to the game. Um, but yeah, we made it to the game. And of course, we kind of hung out a little bit afterwards there after the game was over because we didn't know what the situation was back home. And so we weren't trying to get there too, too soon. Um, but thankfully, when we got home, everything had like cleared up. It was all like false alarm and all that. But it was kind of a odd experience. <laughs> so yeah. And then of course, my stepbrother, he played... Um, basketball throughout middle school and high school so that was also kind of a huge for us because we were always at his you know games and stuff you know cheering him on and all that and then even just for me myself you guys when I was in middle school I really kind of struggled a lot um just kind of I had a bunch of things from just my past kind of eaten away at me um you know I was into self-harm and all of that and so several times during the week, I would actually stay after school and just, you know, shoot hoops. So, uh, I mean, you know, they had the covered area where all the basketball hoops were and stuff. So, you know, rain or shine, there I was. Um, but I don't know, for some reason, just shooting hoops just made me feel good. Um, I would just spend hours literally just shooting away. Um, and I guess it was just kind of an outlet for me that kind of let me just kind of burn off my stress and energy that I had. And I don't know, just put me in a, in a good mood. Um, so there's that. Um, so that's a little bit on, you know, how basketball was huge for me. I, I even remember also in elementary school, I want to say it was like fifth grade, that I think some of the Blazers came as well as Houston's team. Um, and somehow, I don't know how, but um, 
I actually won a couple of tickets to the WNBA. So I actually got to take my dad to go see the um, Portland Fire who are no longer around. They were very short lived and also uh, them play against the uh, Houston Comets. So that was a cool experience. My first time ever watching the WNBA, but you know, you guys, 90s and like early 2000s was so full of some amazing amazing basketball talent I mean I got to see like the last year of uh Drexler and Reggie Smith with the Blazers um I was always a fan of like Rasheed Wallace Jermaine O'Neal um Pippen and of course, I also had my favorites from other teams like Iverson and Carmelo, uh, LeBron, Shaq, Kobe, uh, Yao Ming. I mean, like I said, 90s, early 2000s, just some awesome, awesome basketball talent. And I definitely do miss those days. Fortunately, you know, things kind of uh, started to fade, you know, once my stepbrother, he obviously moved out after high school and then we ended up moving to another state. And so things just kind of really weren't the same and that was kind of where it all ended. But at least I have those memories of just watching the games on our little itty bitty TV and, you know, seeing the games live and all of that. Um, it was a great experience, you guys. So I, I do hold on to those memories. Um, just they're beautiful to look back on. So um, but yeah, so that's it for that. <laughs> Let's go on ahead and get into my collection. And you guys, if there are any awesome basketball films out there that I am missing, which I'm sure I probably am, definitely let me know in the comments um, so that I can, you know, see if I add them in. All right, so first up, the only VHS that I have in the collection, double teamed. I did just recently add this one in. I'm so freaking stoked to have this one finally in the collection. Uh, this is the true story about uh, Heather and Heidi Burge um, and just kind of their story and how they got to be part of the WNBA and all that. Um, this was an awesome, awesome decom, one of my favorites from back in the day. And so, yeah, I love this one. Next up is Hoosiers. I've seen this a countless number of times. Uh, definitely one that I kind of grew up on. I remember I think actually seeing this in school for the first time. Um, it's definitely long overdue for a revisit though. Got another classic here, which is Hoop Dreams. Excellent. Um, and then we have Finding Forrester. Now this one kind of is a mix of basketball with kind of like creative writing. Basically Sean Connery's character takes on this kid right here, kind of mentors him uh, when it comes to his writing. You know, looks at his work, corrects it, all that, gives him ideas, that kind of stuff. They just kind of form this kind of unlikely, odd little friendship um, because he's kind of a, a grumpy dude. He's kind of a butthead sometimes, but uh, uh, yeah. And uh, the this kid right here, he's obviously this kind of star basketball player at his school, but he's looking to kind of better his situation. So he ends up switching over to a private school, I think like on a scholarship. And so he's, you know, getting into the, the team there, but he's also this kind of closet writer, if you will. Um, this is really, really good, you guys. So definitely check it out if you haven't. Um, next up, I don't think I've seen this one though. It sounds pretty familiar and that is Blue Chips. Um, and then one of my all time favorites, I watched this one like numerous times, um, kind of throughout the year and stuff. And that is Coach Carter. Samuel L. Jackson delivers an amazing performance in here. Um, you do have a really great cast. There's lots of familiar faces in here. Robert Richards in here. Uh, you also have uh, Rick Gonzalez who portrays uh, Timo Cruz right here, which I really kind of connect with his character in this film. Um, there's several scenes where he's in them. And I don't know, I just get teary eyed like every time I watch this film. Um, and I guess it's just kind of that connection that I kind of feel with his character and stuff and the struggle of trying to you know leave all the bad things behind and whatnot um, and stuff so but this is really really good obviously it's a true story about coach Carter and just kind of his his career as you know coach and stuff like that and I guess he was a really like talented player you know the school and stuff back in the day so pretty awesome flick another one too that I watch quite frequently is Glory Road another amazing true story here basically uh, Josh Lucas who delivers a fantastic performance in here he uh, takes on a teaching not teaching but you know coaching gig at a college in Texas um, and the, obviously it's not really one of the schools that many people, I guess, would consider. Um, and so he goes out trying to recruit, uh, nobody wants to, you know, give in. And so he ends up actually recruiting a bunch of African-American players. And, uh, there's one epic game in here, um, important game that, um, he actually starts five african-american players and obviously that kind of goes down in history and stuff but it is really really good your kind of lead basketball player is a bobby joe hill who is portrayed by Derek luke if you guys are familiar with him he had his debut role as antoine fisher um he's also in biker boys and pieces of april very underrated actor in my opinion um but his performance in here is outstanding 
Next up is a title that I got from Dollar Tree. And this is actually surprisingly a pretty solid little flick. And that is Thunderstruck. Of course, you do have Kevin Durant in here. Um, but basically, he kind of uh, switches places with this kid. Or I should say talents. Um, and it's just a fun little watch, you guys. I uh, definitely recommend it. Next up, we have Uncle Drew. This is one that I've been meaning to get to. But you have an awesome cast. And it definitely looks like some cheesy fun. All right, next up is The Sixth Man. Highly recommend this one. This movie is a blast. It is so, so funny. Of course, you got Marlon Wines in here, so you really can't go wrong there. But basically, um, Marlon Wines, his uh, brother, who was also part of the basketball team, he died. And uh, he kind of comes back as this kind of spirit, if you will, or ghost. And so he kind of plays their sixth man. There's lots of just kind of odd things happening and stuff. And it is just kind of ridiculous, but it is so, so fun, you guys. So definitely check this one out if you have not. Of course, you have the uh, Teen Wolf here, classic. Now this one, this movie is absolutely hilarious, but this one is like a mix of like kind of baseball and basketball, and that is basketball. But this is just some ridiculous fun, you guys. Super funny and just kind of cheesy. So definitely recommend that one. Um, then we got this film here, 17 again, with Zac Efron. Basically, it's kind of those ones where he kind of wishes he could kind of go back to, you know, his younger days. And it just so happens that he that wish kind of comes true. And so he's back in his old shoes and whatnot and uh, kind of wondering if he made the right choices. But basically, he was this, uh, like, high school basketball star or whatever. So, I mean, you, you got some of that in here. But we got 17 again. Next up, we got Queen Latifah in Common in Just Right. This one, I don't know if you really want to consider this like a rom-com, but I definitely dig it. Uh, I really enjoyed the chemistry between the two of them in here. Um, she is one of those, I forget what the heck you call them, but she kind of is at the sidelines of like the basketball games and she's the one who kind of, you know, patches up the players, their ankles, all that stuff. I forget what the heck it's called. <laughs> I seriously took a class about it in like uh, high school or whatever, but yeah. Um, and they basically end up falling in love. So uh, it's a good one. Of course, we got Basketball Diaries, Leonardo DiCaprio. This one is a little bit more on the depressing side since this kind of have to do with like addiction and stuff like that, but it is very, very good. All right, next up is this film here called Hurricane Season. This one was actually pretty good. Basically, you have this team. Um, I forget whereabouts they, they are, but a hurricane passes through the town and it's kind of the end of things. But there are some of the players that they want to get this team back together and stuff, despite all of the chaos after the hurricane and all that. And so, yeah, it's basically kind of the upbringing of this new team after you know tragedy of the hurricane and all that so it, it was good um next up love and basketball <sighs> i freaking love this one this is one too that i could seriously like constantly watch all the time i think this is the perfect perfect mix of love and basketball <laughs> i mean like seriously uh, i love the chemistry between omar epps and sana lathan and like i mean i'll Obviously, there's other like great people in this film as well. Alfred Woodard's in here and just like a bunch of other people. But yo, so, so good. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say on this film. But if you've never seen this, you definitely should. Like I said, it's just a perfect blend of the two. Love and basketball. Of course, it wouldn't be a basketball collection without Space Jam. And then obviously, we got Space Jam 2 here. Honestly, you guys, like, I mean, this is classic right here, okay? Michael Jordan and the whole mix with the Looney Tunes and all that, and yo, it's fun, for sure. Um, and, but the second one here, honestly, I don't think that it deserved the hate that it got. Uh, I mean, LeBron is, like, not necessarily, you know, Michael Jordan, but, I mean, I didn't think he did bad in here, and I, I love just all the characters getting back together and then all of the extra, extra characters in here. Uh, I mean, I dig the storyline and everything, so I don't know why this film got so freaking much hate. Like, I... Don't get me wrong, the Michael Jordan, Space Jam, classic from my childhood. It's an all-time favorite, but this one, I mean, I'm not going to say it's whew, right up there with it, but it, it's still a fun one, you guys. I definitely think this is a just kind of fun kind of comeback, I guess, so uh, didn't deserve the hate. Next up is The Way Back. This is one, honestly, I will say, you guys, I wasn't a huge fan of this one, but... I need to give this one a second watch and go into it with a different mindset. Something that was came like to my attention um, just kind of changes the whole mentality of this film. And so I definitely need to go in and give it another watch. But this one is more so the uh, coach here who is this like alcoholic and stuff like that. And so it is a little kind of depressing a bit. But um, yeah, it deals kind of more with the whole addiction thing. So um, we got The Way Back. And of course, 
air. Love this one, though it's not necessarily about basketball. Like you really don't get any like kind of playtime in here, but it's more, I guess you could say about the, you know, basketball image, the image of the famous Michael Jordan, obviously. Um, so it is still so, so good. You guys like the dialogue in this is just absolutely amazing. Um, and the story of it and just, you know, landing Michael Jordan as the image of Nike and all that. It's, I mean, it's a cool story, you guys, but like I said, it's not really, you're not going to see a whole lot of you know hoops and all that in here so um but it, it's a really good story and i dig it um next up is this film here called boogie i have yet to check this one out but i have heard good things on it and same with this i kind of want to get to this one sooner than later and that is champions with woody harrelson this is one too that i've heard some awesome things on so i definitely need to get around to watching that and then we do have a semi pro here there's another one too i i've kind of only seen this one in bits and pieces so i need to watch it in full but i mean it's will ferrell and it looks just like some cheesy fun so all right, so another one of my all-time favorites here, Juana Man. This movie is absolutely hilarious. I love it so, so much, you guys. Um, and you just have a freaking awesome, awesome cast in here. Um, and it basically, you have... Um, is it Miguel? Yeah, Miguel Nunez's character. He plays the character of Juana. Basically, he was banned from the men's team, and so he dresses up as a woman so that he can get into the you know women's team and stuff. And it is just some ridiculous fun, you guys. So if you've never seen this one, you definitely should. Next up, we have this film here called More Than a Game. I've not checked this one out. I got this one at Dollar Tree a while back and just haven't gotten around to it. But it is the incredible true story of LeBron James and the Akron Fave. Fab Five, Fab Five, I can't even talk no more. <laughs> Fab Five. Um, I know there's also like another film or two out there about the Fab Five. Um, I haven't seen any of them. So I'm actually kind of curious to check this one out and uh, see what the Fab Five is all about. All right, so next up, yes, including High School Musical, because technically, I mean, obviously, the Zac Efron's character, Troy Bolton, he plays the kind of lead star of the high school basketball team, but it does also have to do, you know, with, like, the whole musical aspect and, like, the drama club and all that, and, you know, so <laughs> you kind of have a mix of the two, but, I mean, you do get some, like, basketball scenes and stuff in here, so, I mean, I figured I'd go ahead and include that one. Um, and then this one, too, another actual... Uh, um, Disney Channel original, and that is Hatching Feet. Um, this one basically, uh, what is his name? Jason Dolly, I think, or something like that. Um, yeah, Jason Dolly, which is him right here. He takes on uh, playing the mascot of a high school, you know, team. Um, and basically, the basketball team, they're not doing all that great, but once, uh, you know, Pete takes on uh, the mascot, kind of just brings all this school spirit and gets everybody all excited again and whatnot and you know team starts winning all that so i mean it, it's cute little kind of basketball flick um next up is this film here called the basket so i haven't seen this one but it definitely seems like some sort of an inspirational type film um basically it is about a community torn apart by war coming together for basketball so we got that one um this one too i've not seen this one but we got the basketball fix it is in one of those like slim cases um i'm not sure what year this is from it doesn't even say on here so but yeah so we got the basketball fix um then of course we have the absent-minded professor i have not seen this one and i actually did not even know this was like had to do with basketball in a way when i picked this one up but uh yeah it's basically what do they call it like um his use of flubber like you can see um the basketball team right there they're kind of flying there so <laughs> i don't know it seems kind of funny um i don't exactly know how much basketball is actually in this film but uh if you guys know if it's any good let me know so um next up we got some early kind of anthony mackie here i always enjoy this film but it has like seriously like terrible ratings um it's film crossover um i dig it you guys it's kind of like the whole underground basketball type thing or whatever but yeah you got anthony mackie with uh wesley jonathan here been meaning to get to this one and that is he got game so definitely need to check this one out sooner than later um then this is another new one that i recently added in and that is heaven is a playground uh, definitely need to check that one out and then this one is based on a true story and this is called the pistol uh this is about i don't know i know he's this like i guess scrawny kid who plays basketball what is his name 
Pete Maravich, if that's how you pronounce it, but it is based on a true story though. So um, I guess he was just, just this like scrawny basketball player. An all time favorite as well. We got a little bow wow in like Mike. So, I mean, it's a fun concept of a film. He finds these shoes that supposedly belong to Michael Jordan and they give him these like crazy, you know, basketball uh, skills and he just kind of becomes this like overnight basketball star or whatever. You got Morris Chestnut in here too. You got a lot of great people. Jesse Plemons is in here. Um, Jonathan Lipnicki. I mean, so many, so many just good people in here. So, um, it's a fun one. The second one wasn't all that great. I probably should consider getting it for the collection just to be a completionist, but like Mike, I love it. Next up is this film here called Freestyle. This one, I saw the trailer for it. I recently added in like a few months ago and I just haven't gotten around to watching it, but it definitely seemed like some sort of like a mix of like basketball and maybe like dance or something. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, next up we got Plan for Love. This is another one too that I got from like Dollar Tree and it was pretty solid. The thing that I liked about this film was that typically when it comes to these kind of basketball flicks and there's a love story, it's usually about like the players or whatever, but basically you have this high school uh, basketball coach who actually falls for this transfer starter basketball student, um, falls for his mom. And so it, it was kind of interesting to have for the love story to kind of be between the two of them and not your typical, you know, between, you know, player and high school girl or whatever, something like that. Um, so that was different. That was different to see. Um, and next up we have Eddie, basically Whoopi Goldberg. She um, kind of wins this thing where she gets to be, you know, coach for the game or whatever. And it actually leads into like kind of a more permanent position or whatever. It was pretty funny. Uh, we got Slam Dunk Ernest. I actually have not seen this one. Surprise, surprise. I mean, I'm a huge Ernest fan, but this is just one that I have yet to check out. I don't know why, um, but we got that one. Uh, we got another classic here. Um, excellent cast. Got Marlon Wines, uh, Dwayne Martin, Tupac in Above the Rim. This is one that I remember constantly watching growing up. So it's classic, very, very good. Um, then we have this film here called Thousand to One. This is actually a true story based on Corey Wiseman. Um, basically, I think it was like his freshman year, he actually had a very bad stroke and it kind of put a uh, pause on his, obviously, you know, basketball life and stuff like that. And uh, I think it had to do with him like making some sort of like a slow kind of comeback. But I mean, it was pretty solid from what I remember. I've only seen it the one time, so I probably should, you know, give it a watch again. But I remember it being okay. Um, next up, I need to check this one out, but we have the Mighty Max. And then of course, Rebound. This one is just absolutely hilarious, you guys. Uh, yeah, Martin Lawrence, he's just so funny. I mean, I love everything that he's in. And this one is um, basically has to do with his son's like basketball team and stuff like that. And, or it's like his, I don't know if his son or stepson, but anywho, um, it, it just brings a laugh, you guys. So if you've not seen this one, definitely check it out. Then of course, uh, Airbud, the first one, heck yeah. Another one I grew up on and I always, always had a love for Airbud. So, um, and it's just kind of a fun concept of, you know, a dog playing basketball and stuff. Um, few kind of, uh, you know, teary eye moments in it, but uh, it, it's a lot of fun, you guys. And then uh, two more here. These ones though, uh, so I was looking through like a list of like, you know, basketball flicks and stuff. And these two actually showed up on there. Uh, I haven't seen either of them. So I don't exactly know how much, you know, like playtime or basketball stuff is actually in these movies. But we have uh, Forget Paris and My Giant. I know Forget Paris, uh, Billy Crystal's character, I guess is this like basketball referee. Um, that's all I really know there. And then My Giant, I'm not too sure if I know that um, this guy right here, obviously he's like really, really tall and Billy Crystal kind of uh, takes him on and I, I don't exactly know the full story of it, but I mean, I'm assuming since he's so tall, it's going to lead to like basketball or something. So, um, hey, they were on the list. So had to go ahead and include them. If you guys have seen either of them, please let me know your thoughts. So that is everything basketball movie wise that I have in my collection. Again, if you guys have any recommendations that I should add in, definitely leave them in the comments below. Uh, as well as if you guys have seen any of these films, I would love to hear your thoughts on them or even just the films that I haven't seen, which ones I should jump on first. Let me know. Also, what is your guys' favorite basketball team? Are you guys into basketball? Let me know. Thank you so, so much for watching. Join the family if you have not, and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.